Thanks for tuning in to this week's news recap. The biggest Bitcoin upgrade since 2017. On November 14th, at block height 709,632, Bitcoin's taproot upgrade was activated, marking the first major protocol upgrade to Bitcoin in over four years. With Taproot, Bitcoin transactions should be more flexible, secure, and efficient. Taproot implements three Bitcoin Improvement Proposals, or BIPs, simultaneously. BIP340 introduces Schnorr signatures, a new type of digital signature that is faster, more secure, and less data-intensive than ECDSA, the previous cryptographic method. BIP341 essentially compresses data from complex Bitcoin transactions, reducing fees, minimizing memory usage, and improving Bitcoin scalability. BIP342 defines TapScript, allowing for more flexible future upgrades. Put together, Taproot is a package of upgrades that increases network efficiency, lowers the cost of Lightning network transactions, allows for smart contract functionality, and improves user privacy, as described by CoinShares and by Chainalysis, in two reports that I highly recommend. Taproot was initially proved in June when it reached a 90% consensus among miners. As Bitcoin is open source and decentralized, Taproot is a voluntary upgrade, meaning that not all miners are required to adopt the new technology. As of writing, 54% of Bitcoin nodes are running Taproot. According to Chainalysis, getting even 50% of miners to accept Taproot so quickly should be considered a win. Bitcoin's last upgrade, SegWit, was only used by roughly 50% of transactions two years after it passed. As of now, four years later, that proportion is 80%. President Biden signed the infrastructure bill. Now what? On Monday, President Joe Biden signed the Infrastructure Investment Jobs Act into law. The bill contains provisions that will require crypto exchanges dubbed crypto brokers by the act to report certain transactions to the Internal Revenue Service, under the current language, brokers must report to the IRS any proceeds from digital asset trading, the tax basis for digital assets, the transfer of digital assets to another exchange, and transfers from exchanges to self-custodied wallets. In addition, all businesses, not just crypto exchanges, must report the receipt of more than $10,000 of digital assets in a transaction. The reporting will go into effect in 13 months at the beginning of 2023. In response to the bill, lawmakers are working to change the language regarding brokers. Senators Ron Wyden and Cynthia Lemus introduced a bill that would limit the broker definition to exclude miners and stakers, as well as wallet providers and developers. Senator Ted Cruz took it a step further by introducing a bill that would strike from the record the crypto provision expanding the definition of a crypto broker, so it would be as if such section had never been enacted. On Thursday, a bipartisan group of nine members from the U.S. House of Representatives introduced the Keep Innovation in America Act. The bill seeks to modify the definition of crypto broker and the provision regarding tax code 6050I. Board Ape Yacht Club experienced a 400% volume spike this week. NFT numbers being down across the board, pun intended, did not stop Board Ape Yacht Club, a collection of 10,000 ape PFPs, from having a crazy week. According to data from Cryptoslam.io, sales volume for the collection was up 400% over the seven days prior to the 17th. At $112 million in volume, Board Ape Yacht Club did nearly three times as much as CryptoPunks over the same period, at $43 million. The skyrocketing volume coincided with a few big headlines regarding Board Ape Yacht Club. Last Wednesday, Rolling Stone collaborated with Mutant Ape Yacht Club, a derivative of the Board Ape brand, to mint two NFTs of special edition magazine covers. This week, the two covers sold for a combined 147 ETH, or roughly $700,000. In addition, two music groups have announced plans to launch metaverse brands based on Bored Apes. Universal Group is forming Kingship, a virtual band of four Bored Ape NFTs that will perform in animated and virtual settings. Timbaland, a Grammy-winning artist, announced a similar move, dubbed Ape In Productions, Ape In will soon release its first single and NFT collectible. Notably, Yuga Labs, the developer of Board Ape Yacht Club, grants NFT holders full commercial rights. This allows artists to use their Board Ape NFTs in creating derivative art and products, like music albums. On top of the Rolling Stone collaboration and Metaverse Music, Board Ape Yacht Club also got a boost from Jimmy Fallon, the host of The Tonight Show, 
who tweeted about and changed his profile picture to a bored ape. Polkadot's first parachain auction sold for over $1 billion. Akala, a DeFi platform, won the bidding war for Polkadot's first parachain slot after committing $1.3 billion in DOT to the auction. Overall, 10 projects competed for the first parachain slot, putting in roughly $3.5 billion in DOT. While winning the first slot is historically significant, it makes no tangible difference, as the first five parachain winners will go live simultaneously on December 17th. Users don't always like the answer to when token. Paraswap, a DEX aggregator, announced a retroactive airdrop of a PSP governance token on Monday. The protocol is distributing 150 million PSP tokens, or 7.5% of the total supply, across roughly 20,000 wallets. Notably, the airdrop introduced a heavy filtering process to ensure the PSP was allocated to users most relevant to Paraswap's vision, the team announced. According to Shreth Agrawal, an algorithm designer for Paraswap, to be eligible, users had to complete at least six Paraswap transactions in the six months before the snapshot date of October 8th. Eligible users also needed to hold a minimum native token balance. Additionally, Paraswap users based in the US and China were excluded from the drop. As a result, only 20,000 wallets received an airdrop, just 0.015% of addresses that interacted with Paraswap. Paraswap's founder, Munir Benchimled, suggested that the robust eligibility requirements were necessary due to so many users attempting to game the airdrop. In the lead-up, over 1.3 million addresses, more than one-fourth of all unique DeFi wallets on Ethereum, used the protocol. Benchimled believes many of these addresses were not real users, as he explained to Coindesk. The vast majority are farmers, and some of them are quite sophisticated. They use bots, sending tokens to thousands of wallets, sometimes tens of thousands of wallets, and they're not real active users. The decision to drop a token comes less than two months after the protocol said it was not planning any such action. Quentin Tarantino is getting sued over Pulp Fiction NFTs. Last week, Quentin Tarantino announced his intention to auction off a collection of uncut scenes from the cult classic Pulp Fiction as NFTs on Secret Network. However, it appears the NFT sale has hit an obstacle. Miramax, which produced Pulp Fiction, is alleging that it holds the rights to Pulp Fiction. In a recently filed complaint, Miramax alleges that Tarantino kept his Pulp Fiction NFT plans secret from Miramax and was undeterred by a cease and desist order. By the sound of it, Miramax thinks that Tarantino's decision to NFT work that has murky rights could lead to other artists making the same move. Tarantino's conduct has forced Miramax to bring this lawsuit against a valued collaborator to enforce, preserve, and protect its contractual and intellectual property rights relating to one of Miramax's most iconic and valuable film properties. Left unchecked, Tarantino's conduct could mislead others into believing Miramax is involved in his venture. And it could also mislead others into believing they have the rights to pursue similar deals or offerings, when in fact, Miramax holds the rights needed to develop, market, and sell NFTs relating to its deep film library, concluded Miramax. Consensus's $3.2 billion funding round comes amid legal action. On Wednesday, Consensus closed a $200 million raise, valuing the Ethereum developer at $3.2 billion. With the new funds, Consensus plans to enhance its presence in Asia, where it already supports 10 CBDC projects there. The company will also be hiring 400 people, marking a shift for a firm that laid off 20% of its workforce in 2020. The move to expand and hire comes as a group of former employees and shareholders are readying legal action against Consensus AG. According to Coindesk, the group is alleging that Consensus AG improperly valued key assets, such as MetaMask, during an asset transfer to a new entity in which JP Morgan is an investor. Speaking of MetaMask, the digital wallet service reported that 21 million users actively use its platform each month. Note, it is unclear how MetaMask measures users rather than addresses or wallets. On a related funding note, this was a big week for funding rounds. Gemini, the Winklevoss-led crypto exchange, raised $400 million at a valuation of $7.1 billion. The information unveiled a report that both Anchorage, a digital bank specializing in crypto custody, and Fireblocks, a crypto infrastructure firm, are also in talks to raise funding rounds at multi-billion dollar valuations. The information also reported that the NFT marketplace OpenSea has received funding offers at a valuation of $10 billion. 
a more than 6x increase from OpenSea's valuation in March. Time for fun bits. Ether on a balance sheet? It's about time. ETH is hitting institutional balance sheets via Time Magazine. The publisher is partnering with Galaxy Digital to launch a slew of metaverse-themed products, starting with a 100-company list for the metaverse and a weekly newsletter dubbed Into the Metaverse. Time will be financing both projects solely with Ether, which Time will hold on its balance sheet. ETH is the second cryptocurrency to make its way to Time's books. Time has been holding BTC since April. Also, NFL NFTs. The National Football League announced that fans attending games through the end of 2021 will receive commemorative NFTs via a Ticketmaster digital wallet built on Polygon. NFTs will first be distributed at the Chicago Bears versus Detroit Lions game on Thanksgiving Day. All right, thanks for tuning in. To learn more about Will and Constitution Dow, be sure to check out the links in the show notes. Unconfirmed is produced by me, Laura Shin, with help from Anthony Yoon, Mark Murdoch, and Daniel Ness. Thanks for listening.